hope uh, my presentation, uh, which has to be completed in 10 minutes, uh, would be good for you and uh, some new light I am going to put. So next slide, please. So in my agenda, there are three major pillars. One about the company, what we do. Second, I have taken a specific kind of case study, you could say, because this is a disruption in the EV technology. So as in the semiconductor, there is a big disruption, much more bigger than what is in EV. And the third is sustainability, because we are all talking about sustainability today. So now we have 50,000 employees. We have $16.1 billion last year. And, and today, 14 main manufacturing centers. And we spend a lot in R&D. And with power and with silicon carbide in automotive, we are number one worldwide today. Next one. Our, our strategy has got three major pillars. Based on these three major pillars, we have derived the strategy. One is automotive. Second is, that's what we call smart mobility, power energy, and internet of things and connectivity. Next, please. Now, now why, why, why EV and what is happening today? So two, two major, if you see left side of my slide, there is pressure on carbon neutrality. So we wanted to use everything with uh, running by the electrification with electricity. Then we want transport to be decarbonized. And we wanted that there should be a renewable energy generation because Mohammed just told that we need energy. So renewable energy the, is the answer at the moment. Now. Something is happening in the automotive industry. Automotive industry, the cars are becoming smart with ADAS, with additional features, software inside that. Plus, below the last point you see, there is a decoupling between software and hardware. Means, there is a module of hardware. Use it for different platform by changing the software. This is the trend in the market, what we discuss with our partners and our partners worldwide, number one. Number two, if you see right side of my slide, you see ke how the market is changing. EV market, CAGR, till 2030 is 14%. ICE engine is less, is going down by 4%. But if you see below, the growth in the semiconductor demand is 23% in case of XEV. XEV consists of all the kind of vehicle which are related to battery, okay? Not only BEV. And ICE also is increasing 2%. That's a TAM, CAGR. Means, that means that with the demand of number of cars is required, we are facing more challenge to have more semiconductor. That's, that's behind this slide. So that's a very, very challenging aspect from my side. You could ask why ICE engine, uh, ICE uh, uh, vehicle require more semiconductor? Because there are a lot of augmentations are happening. It's left side. ADAS, a smart vehicle connectivity, and all those things. That's why it's like that. Next slide. Now, when I, when I see, uh, see only the uh, battery-operated vehicle, battery electric vehicle, you see the total time is $58 billion. That is going to be in 2030, starting from $21 billion, just, just doubling. And we are talking about a space of uh, eight years. That's what we have to manage together. Important is, there's a lot of innovations are happening. The challenge for us, because this is a big disruption, people are learning, not only in India, everywhere worldwide people are learning. They are learning and they are coming back to us. They say, this is a new idea. Let's develop something out of that. And we develop for them. They ask for a new kind of semiconductor, new kind of specification, new kind of package, new kind of thermal management, new kind of microcontroller, new kind of security, long list, okay? And, Another thing, what we have seen in recent past, that we are earlier aligning to the uh, OEM suppliers. But now we are aligning with the, directly the manufacturer. We are going to the top manufacturer, and they are talking to us for the future platform. So that's the major change semiconductor industry has faced in the recent and find in the recent past. OK, next slide, please. Now, now in this slide, this is quite interesting slide. Uh, I will have three points here. First is range to efficiency. This means, in the simple words, that now people want to have not a holistic efficiency of the vehicle. Means, you wanted to have an efficiency? No. They wanted to improve individual 
efficiency of individual component or individual parts. They wanted to improve the efficiency of OBC, uh, powertrain, and all, all those different different uh, products inside. Number two, integration. So things are being integrated. Means if you see here, uh, there is a EXL integration where you put uh, put uh, driver on the top of the motor along with the motor or integration like that if you have a dc dc converter for example so you use in three three areas dc dc converter why not to use a single board and supply the power supply so number of things would be reduced over there and that leads to the integration and the third one is very important the modular approach it's not a conventional ice engine so here it's electronics so you could have different modules for example if you have um, uh, you have got uh, Charging station of 100 kilowatt. Why, why you need to have 100 kilowatt uh, charger? You could have 20, 20 kilowatt five charger, and you put a stick, and it will be very, very fast and easy earlier. And then later on, you could you could design something else. So flexibility is there. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Now, this is an integration and other things from the manufacturer point of view. Now, when we when we talk about our point of view. Our point of view, you see, first one is the normal silicon. So what do we do? We have to increase the power density because we have to put, make it smaller, faster, reliable, rugged, and more efficient. So what do we do? We have done both vertical and horizontal structure in that. OK, so, so this is called super junction in IGBT. We call it tench or other technologies. Then, but, but that does not, does not work so much. It's a limitation over there for silicon. Then, I'm audible still. OK. So then we go for a new, a new material, new wide band gap material like silicon carbide and gallium nitride, which gives the answer. But when you have got this kind of device, which I'm going to show you an example, nice example, you will understand uh, fully this, uh, this one. So then you require a special kind of packages to approach again. You could have a modular approach. There could be six. Uh, six uh, uh, silicon carbide or IGBT inside, that kind of integrated package. Or you could have a modular approach like this. You could have this thing, the one device inside, highly reliable, 200 degree centigrade of junction temperature capability, very high voltage. Use it. It's very simple. So there are two approaches are there because of the change. This is the disruption from our side. Next slide, please. So. Why, why we are able to do? There is some intrinsic properties of silicon carbide kind of product. Like we, they have a thermal conductivity, which is three times the normal silicon. And, and because of the higher band, grab, uh, band gap, there is possibility of 10 times more breakdown voltage. So we are talking about 1,500 volt, 1,600 volt, 1,700 volt, 2,200 uh, volt devices now available uh, with us. Then, then because of these, these intrinsic features, we could have device which is high frequency operation with a lower RDS on, and it could work at very high temperature. So high voltage, high temperature, and high frequency. These are the advantage. So by doing this, 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 these three features, which which come come up because of intrinsic property, that we could have very very specific kind of packages. We could put one device, two device, multiple device in parallel in a small packages. Second, uh, we could we could we could reduce the system system weight, even the cost. OK? Next slide, please. So the term 600 kilometer, that's the driving range. Now manufacturers are working today. Uh, faster charging is important. That happens because of the battery. When you have a big battery pack with high voltage capability, otherwise you could not do, have a 400 volt or 600 volt or more battery pack because you need to you need, to, uh, you need to have the semiconductor uh, able to sustain that kind of voltage. So now, if you have got that kind of battery pack, you could able to do the long distance. You could do the fast charging as well. Means you could be charging the battery with a very high voltage, OK, and the car weight reduction. So this is a report not from my side. It's a Goldman Sachs report. And uh, that's, that's the efficiency figure which has been given, and this, that's be determined for the future. Next one, please. OK, this is a very, very uh, small uh, comparison how the things are changing and why there is a disruption. If you see, there is IGBT. So before, before you go to this chart, just see this chart. 
this is an example how 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 this uh, typical typical vehicle work if you see 95% time it works 20% of the full load 20% maximum only in the acceleration mode it works 100%. So for example, this is the example we have taken for 10, 10, 10 kilowatts and 350 ampere, and the traction is 210 kilowatts. So this is the example for that. So when you see 95% time, this is working in the gray area. In the gray area, IGBT works fantastic. Oh, silicon carbide works fantastic because you have got better efficiency. So you efficiency comparison for 89 to 99%. In the big side, both become little bit different over there but but there is a but behind that if you see here the chip area comparison chip area of silicon carbide is five times lesser than the similar IGBT okay because of the chip area is lesser, it could operate on high frequency the switching losses are four times lesser than than the IGBT yes conduction losses at full load is similar because I square R and V into I remain the same so like that. And junction temperature remains the same here because the die size is bigger, so you are able to dissipate through the same package. So that is a comparison. So while you do this kind of, uh, kind of analysis, you are able to put these kind of new devices in a small packages. Or if you put the same package, you could be able to use in the different kind of, uh, kind of uh, more, uh, more, more power. And that gives innovation for the packages for bottom cooling, top cooling, both side cooling, double side cooling, and so on and so forth. Next, please. So this is the same thing, uh, but, but this, this gives a specific challenges to us. It's not easy. The challenges are like that. Of course, it is switching efficiency is quite high. Uh, you have got uh, battery voltage you could go make up because of these technologies, and you could do a lot of integration. And you could, you could innovate because, for example, take example of air conditioner, the conventional air conditioner in the car, you, you, are, you are going in the car, you, you open your window if you feel, okay, fine, I, I, I don't want air condition now. You could shut down, you, you, you want, uh, it should be warm enough, okay? So that is possible, but in the case of, case of this vehicles, you could not put the industrial solution back in the market. Earlier car maker, when they started, they put industrial solution there, but then they realized, no, there is a need, the need of cooling of the battery, heating of the battery. You have to maintain the temperature. So the things are different. From the normal air conditioner, in a, uh, normal vehicle, there is a, uh, some vehicle which are, most of the vehicle have a mechanical air conditioning compressor, some vehicle have a single phase air conditioner. But here you have 400 volt battery, then you have a 400 volt, uh, volt air conditioner, three phase air conditioner which is working at 400 volt. So this is, this is the innovations. So the things which are there remains but you have to think differently. You could think modular approach. So possibilities are enormous, not one. Okay, for us, for us, it's not easy. If you see the right side on top, we need to have a high reliability product because it's going in automotive. Uh, for information, we started in 2016 and 17, we were in full production for automotive grade products. And we have sold few hundred million product by now. So what happens because of that? We, key, we have to first, work on the substrate level, and then for the higher breakdown voltage, we work on the gate oxide. We have to have a continuous improvement in our process to make a reliable product, how it comes. It comes, the last, last thing, when we do the profile of the customer, customer profiling of the application, and we analyze the failure mode, which comes from our customer, demand comes from our customer, or we, we find it our side, and that way we are able to, able to manage. And everything is, done, then there is a package. So very, very specific package that is high voltage, high current capabilities with 200 degrees centigrade for today, uh, that is available. Okay, next one, please. So the same thing, four pillars of our testing or any other manufacturer's testing. Failure analysis, design improvement is not enough. Test, testing improvement. We have to have a new testing protocol to test those products so that every time we have something new, we have a challenge and then we do it and then mission profile assessment what we do over there. Next one, please. And about us, for this specific technology, we started in 1996. First time we have introduced the first generation diode in the, in the year 2007, and that is silicon carbide diode. Full production is started in 2016, as I told. 
Now we in 2022, we are working on the supply chain and we are working on this thing. Uh, first, he got out. Uh, ingot is out in 150 nanometer millimeter, uh, and substrate manufacturing is also there in Akatania. Next one, please. Why, why I am showing that slide on this one slide? The challenge is not only designing. Challenge is not only manufacturing. Challenge is not only making the process. The challenge is also supplying the component. Make supply chain uninterruptible. There should be not be interruption in the, in, the, in the recent past there was. That's why we have our own design center in Sweden. And in Catania, we have got all that integration, all the vertical integration. OK, so we, we do our wafer, we do uh, ingot, as I told you. And that's, that's the kind of thing we are doing today. Next one. So the same one. Next one, please. No needed. Having said that, this conference is all about EV. It's all about sustainability of our planet. And as a company, it's important to share with you that we are the people who are very, very serious. And we signed some agreement also. And sustainability technology, we want to do sustainable way and sustainable company. We want to do sustainable company. So we create a technology which is sustainable. We prioritize the people. We protect the planet place to protect the planet, and we generate long-term value for stakeholders. That's what the idea about this company. Next slide, please. I think this is the last one. So to, to tell you, the audience here, by 2027, we will be net carbon neutral company. That's a pledge from our side. So we start from that point in mind. Thank you very much.